You do a normal intro-y kind of a thing, do you think? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, me neither. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the golden, the new reformed, yes, potentially worse, Golden Hour podcast. <laughs> I'm your host, Dave Mays. And Connor McCaskill. Let's get started with uh, the Sony Kando trip. Yeah, Sony Kando. Uh, Is that how you say it? Kando, Kando. Okay. I can go. You went to it. I did. I went to Sony Kondo. Tell uh, me about it. What was it like? Especially as a non-Canon or a non-Sony shooter. Yeah. I, <laughs> yeah, that was... Uh, so Sony invited a whole bunch of people out to Idaho mm-hmm. for this like little, hey, we shoot on Sony party. Uh, and it was really cool, actually. It's really cool. But I made the mistake immediately. I was on the plane mm. from Salt Lake, where my layover was, to Idaho. I sat next to someone, and I was, it's like, oh, you're probably going to condo, aren't you? And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, cool. They're like, oh, what system? They're like, what camera do you shoot on? I was like, well, don't tell Sony, but I shoot on a Canon R5. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're like, okay, I won't tell Sony, but I work for Sony. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, no. So I messed up immediately. But it was really cool. Um, just We were in Sun Valley, Idaho. Uh, it's a dark zone, so it's really good for astrophotography. The ambient light's really mm. low. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's just a big Sony fest. You That's know? awesome. Everyone's just running around with the Sony camera, having a mm-hmm. good time, shooting models, astrophotography, bowling for no reason. <laughs> bowling. I heard that there was a pickleball as well. There was pickleball. I what is pickleball? I, I assume there's a pickle in a ball. I actually <laughs> never saw it. Um, I heard Jevin tell me about that. Yeah. That he played pickleball with um, some creators. It wasn't me. I wasn't there. So yeah, um, Sony Kando, Kondo, whatever it's called. How many people were there? It was like 300 people? Yeah, it was like over, I think over 300 people. So it was, it was a pretty popping event. A lot of YouTubers shoot on Sony these days. Who knew? <laughs> Who knew? But there was more than that too. There was uh, photographers, like Nat Geo type creators yeah. and photographers. Actually, I would say it was filmmakers. mostly photographers, I would say. It felt very photographer centric with mm-hmm. like YouTubers were also like there, you know, but yeah. I just knew mostly YouTubers. Yeah. So, you basically got to ben- benefit from Armando, right? Yeah. Yeah. I should not have been there. <laughs> Everyone's like, how are you here? And I was like, mm, I have no idea. Story uh, of my life. <laughs> yeah. Armando invited me. Thanks, Armando. Um, so yeah, we went and hung out and most of the time we just competed in a contest. <laughs> Tell me about that. There was a contest the, that Sony decided to do. There's just like this app that they gave us. I think uh, I still have the app. Uh, yeah. They're tracking you. I know. But if I pull it up, uh, yeah, see, there's an app. Wow. Hold it to this one. Wow. Although it's probably blown it's out. It's blown out. But there was yeah. a contest uh, spelled with a K because condo. <laughs> <Nice>. um, <laughs> and basically, <laughs> and basically, there's a, a thing at the top where you'd like enter in codes. Mm-hmm. And there was codes through email or through Instagram or from doing certain activities or even just written on the ground in chalk. Uh-huh. And um, yeah, so basically you'd enter in the codes over the whole event. Whoever had the most codes, they were worth different amount of points. Uh, one whatever GM lens, I think, they wanted to pick. Wow. Yeah. That's a crazy awesome uh, prize, actually. Yeah. That, that could be worth $3,000. Could be. I'm not sure if it was literally any lens, because then it's like, I'll take the I'll 600 take... mil. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> that one's like uh, 10 grand or yeah, something. Yeah, something like that. Um, <laughs> I'll just sell that and buy some <laughs> Canon gear. <laughs> yeah. I think they would officially never let me come back. Um <laughs> They probably won't let you come back already. <laughs> yeah, I, I think next time I need to have a Sony to get in. This might be the key to entry. But yeah, uh, yeah, uh, my whole trip was dedicated to winning that. And sure enough, myself, Armando, Terry Warfield, and a few other people, we all tied for first. Uh huh. So we'll there's see. more than three, right? There was yeah, there was seven of us. So what are they going to do? We have no idea. They have radio silence. Wow. They were like, man, these YouTubers took this way too seriously. (laughs) Yeah, I know. So I think Fun for Louie was up there too. So yeah, just we'll see what happens. We don't know. Hey, if I get a lens, uh, maybe I'll buy a Sony. Come on. I I used the Sony a7 IV uh, the whole trip. I rented it from them with a few different lenses. I tried their new 24 to 70. Mm -hmm. I tried their 135 mil 1.8, I think. And uh, And then I tried out their... Uh, 14 mil for some Astro. What do you think of that uh, A7 IV? I really like it. I really liked it. Um, I like it for photography a lot, actually. Yeah, that's pretty much all. I, I didn't shoot a single video with it. Don't you like the little uh, AF, AF button? It's really, it's like a comfortable little button. It kind of sticks out a little bit more. On the back? feels kind of pushy. 
Yeah. I never used it. Oh, okay. Yeah. You do the halfway press mm-hmm. thing? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Amateur. I know. I know. I don't. Uh, yeah. Hey. <laughs> I'm going to overuse the sound. Yeah, I know. That's too much power for you. It worked. You know, that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> cool, man. Um, yeah, I, there's something about the color on the four. I actually prefer it over the S, I think. I think the skin tones look a little better on it. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I'd have to do a direct It's comparison. sharp. My dad owns one, ironically. <laughs> like, oh, really? Yeah, my dad bought the A7S III, you know, because he... My dad's actually a filmmaker. If you've listened to this show, I've interviewed him a couple times. Um, and he, he does documentary films. And he's always having to rent stuff. And he was like, I'm sick of renting stuff. Like, just tell me what to buy. And I was like, well, um, honestly, the A7S III is probably the best all-around camera. Yeah. It, it's almost kind of like being an editor for Adobe. When people are like, what editor should I use? It's like, well, <coughs> you should probably use DaVinci Resolve. Yeah. It's like, that's, and then as a Canon user, uh-huh. you're like, well, what camera should I get? Well, you should probably get a Sony. <laughs> yeah, that's it's like, true. It's like, I'm sitting over here and I'm like, this is what I use, but don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> that's especially true for us. We're shooting on two Olympus cameras and the R5 right now. Yeah. Not exactly the best setup for this. Every 30 minutes, we're going to have to get up and... Uh, <laughs> hit the record yeah. button but that's also also partially because soundstripe is borrowing my c70 at the moment sure otherwise we'd have that in the mix but yeah the the r5 it cuts off every 30 minutes i know i know i thought maybe with the new update they'd fix that but no you gotta have an r5c but i did use the a7 IV uh at the fair with my family oh yeah my dad, you like it i just i was like we're going to the fair i have the olympus but it's micro four thirds and even though i do have really fast primes um, I don't have a good zoom and I like having a zoom with the kids cause they're always doing crazy stuff. Mm-hmm. And my dad owns that really nice compact Tamron 28 to 75 two eight zoom. Yeah. Uh, on the, and on the a seven four though, the S would be better for low light. The four is no slouch. Um, and so yeah, it's pretty good. It has, I think it's dual native at 800 and 3200 ISO okay. for video. Um, I don't know. It yeah. looked clean to me. No, that's that I is used what it, it is. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I used it at the fair, uh, knowing that I would be doing some low light photography. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it was a champ. The skin tones looked great. The autofocus was perfect. It was frustrating how reliable and good it was. And it looked sharp. And f- like the color science to me looked pleasing. It didn't look bad. No. Like yeah. It, it used to. It's, it's really stepped like, up their uh, game. I know. Dang it. I think the only thing that Canon has over sony which is probably debatable or preference is for me the like just the overall handling mm-hmm. and grip and i do think still marginally the color is better like marginally I, I do marginally it, it's very we're splitting marginal. hairs yeah we're splitting hairs here um but i do still prefer it but yeah anyways um so let's move on to follow-up which follow-up is our next segment, but we have none. Yeah, because there this, is no follow-up. This is the first of this format. Yeah, we're switching it up um, now that uh, we're not. We don't have friends, so we're not interviewing people anymore. <laughs> uh, it's just Dave and I now. Um, so that the we're doing. Uh, we're see how you guys like it. Um, yeah, we're, we're doing like a little little intro, a little catch up. In this case, I went to condo. So mm-hmm. wow, I hope you enjoyed that. And mm-hmm. uh, then the follow-up is whatever we're going to follow up from the previous week or uh, any anything that you guys point out to us. So for example, some of the banter that we just had, you may have some thoughts about that. Sure. You may disagree with us. Yeah, Let probably, us know. usually. Let us know on Twitter or Instagram. Um, you can follow Connor at Connor McCaskill or Connor underscore McCaskill right. on Instagram. Um, and then you could follow me on Twitter at Dave Mays. And uh, feel free to just reach out in your preferred platform um, if you have any follow-up based on what we're talking about. Because this show is now changing from primarily uh, guest-based shows, mm-hmm. where which I've enjoyed. And I don't want to completely not do that. Sure. There I can think, be room for that, of course. I mean, imagine if you and I had somebody on the screen here, you know, uh, we have a screen off camera. Um <laughs> You know, so we could have somebody on sure. uh, remotely that would be interesting. That could be a segment. Um, but th- the repeatability of this show is hard for me personally, having to book guests week over week. And 
some of my favorite podcasts ever have the same two or three hosts. Mm -hmm. Um, You listen to a show called Distractables with Markiplier and his two friends. Great. Yeah, his two friends. It's hilarious. His poor two friends who just are referred to as Markiplier and his two friends. (laughs) Bob and Wade. They're great people. Yeah, I I don't listen to it enough to know their name. I I remember Bob's name. Yeah. Um, I I never remember Wade. Um, (laughs) That's funny (laughs) if you listen to the podcast, actually. Yeah, and then... uh, you know, I, I listen to a lot of Apple podcasts, shows on Relay FM. Um, I'm a huge Mac Break Weekly fan. I've been listening to that for like 10 years. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's the same guests week over week. And they have a format. And it's re- repeatable, obviously, for the hosts to do that. And you really create kind of a real rapport with the with the guests. It becomes a friendly banter between the guests. Yeah. Um, and who better then Connor to collaborate with on this uh, yeah. new venture. Um, if you listen to the last, I guess, two episodes ago with Nick Friend, I kind of announced that Polar Pro had uh, removed their, uh, not really necessarily sponsorship, but ownership, really, of this show. They're like, hey, Dave, you can have this. Yeah, they, they just, it was nothing personal. It wasn't like a big breakup or anything. I'm still really good friends with those guys over there. And I love Polar Pro as a company and just everybody that we met. I mean, we made some really good friends there. Mm -hmm. Um, But they just didn't have any reason to continue the show. So um, they were kind enough to let me take over and own it and move forward. And I floundered around with the idea of continuing it in its form as just a guest-based show and realized I just don't want to have to getting paid basically gave me a lot of reason to line those things up. (laughs) But, um, working with Connor with this, I think makes a lot of sense because we're around each other a lot. We're always doing something, um, something somewhere, somewhere. (laughs) So, uh, we have lots of thoughts about cameras. We have lots of thoughts about filmmaking, about YouTube. Um, we're traveling, you know, I'm going to vid summit in a couple weeks. Yeah. You're doing some projects with Jim, probably somewhere in Costa Mesa or whatever. Costa Mesa? Costa, Costa Mesa Costa is what Ma- I wanted to say. I, yeah. But yeah, then yeah. also there's the country of Costa Rica. Costa Rica. <laughs> so, and either don't start with whatever you were saying. Costa Mesa. Um, no, I'm going to Philadelphia, actually. <laughs> What is that? What is that? I think that's crickets, like you're boring or something. But it's not a good version. It's not a good crickets. cricket. Yeah, that's just the road uh, default cricket sound. That sounds that's like they uh, stuck a road wireless go just in the grass, and they're like, "That'll work." But you gotta say it with an Australian accent because roads from Australia. Road. That'll work. That'll work. Put put a shrimp on the barbie. Eh? I can't do an Australian. Accent. I can't do any accent. I can barely <laughs> do my accent. So, anyways, we're gonna try to. Um, do this every single week and we would love for you guys to be involved. Almost like a dialogue. I really like back in the day, back, back in the day, let's reminisce a little bit, <laughs> uh, you know, back when they did Kinetika and we did the Kinetika live streams, it was yeah. one of my favorite parts, yeah, uh, was the dialogue and talking with people. And mm-hmm. this is a little more delayed because it's yeah. not a live stream, but still it'd be nice to like get feedback and then directly totally. talk back to whatever you guys have to say. Yeah. And so... We're opening up the uh, DMs to you guys to have any follow-up. But in addition to that, there's another segment, uh, and I'll save it for later, but yeah. it requires a hashtag in Twitter. So yeah. Classic. Um, so yeah, so that's our follow-up on the follow-up segment, which doesn't exist yet because it's the first one. So we have no follow-up. Yeah, this whole first episode is kind of jank. We're going to like rebrand. We haven't done that yet. There's going to be a whole like coffee thing, but now we're drinking White Claws because it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's 11 o'clock. It's 11 o'clock. It's 11 o'clock at night. This is going to be recorded in the morning. Listen, hey, bear with us. Episode one is going to be good. Okay. <laughs> like, you know, in the future. Okay? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, man. So should we move on to our main topic? <laughs> yeah, we should do that. <laughs> yeah, we should do that. Uh, should we switch to Sony? <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, it, it comes back to a kind of our intro, right? Is yeah. like, um, it's sort of the sensible choice. Yeah. And there's a lot of sensible people out there who right. uh, treat what they do as a job. Right, yeah. And so, therefore, they make... Idiots. <laughs> so, therefore, they're just thinking about it objectively. Yeah. Like, what is the best tool for my job? Right. And right now, 
it's looking a lot like Sony is the best tool for the job. It depends on what you're doing, but like if you're, especially if you're in the YouTube space, like more than anything, it's like, mm -hmm. it just makes sense. Well, YouTube space, even um, the professional video space, because wait for this, this is going to make a sound. This is the sound of coffee. I, my screen dimmed because the screen saver went up. So I had to turn on the, uh, you yeah, know, the coffee, it, caffeine. Yeah, we're professionals. Don't worry about it. Yeah, but <laughs> we're getting Taco Bell after this. <laughs> <laughs> They're still open. Hashtag not sponsored. Because my my Taco Bell in this general area for some reason closes early. It's not an all nighter. Yeah, that's like, I don't know that Taco Bell knows that because they feel like they would be against it. <laughs> I remember everything in Laguna when we lived there was like it would close at like eight o'clock. Yeah, it was awful. Like if you got the midnight munchies, you just had to suffer. I remember one time driving like over to a whole nother city yeah. altogether, like San Clemente. There was an in and out open, mm -hmm. but I don't, that's a whole other conversation. But we'll save that for a podcast. Yeah. I don't, I don't really care for it. We'll, we'll talk about it later. <laughs> so I don't go there. So anyways, a lot of our friends have switched to Sony. Armando famously mm -hmm. has switched from being a very hardcore Canon. Big person. Canon guy. I mean, we've shot C200. We shot with the EOS R. He got a lot of people on the EOS R because a lot of people wrote off that camera back in the day. And um, uh, C500 Mark II. That's yeah, that, a, that, that was, was a, an expensive one, the C200. Yeah, C500 Mark II. That's, I still might be one of my favorite cameras I've shot with. I really like that camera. Um we're fortunate to work with a guy named Chris Haggerty from Soundstripe and he owns one. So yeah. we have been using it more again. Mm -hmm. uh, we used it for my uh, drone video that we shot in Vegas because he had it and that was the wide shot. And yeah. as soon as I applied just that basic LUT, I was just like, oh my gosh. Yeah, it's, colors. it's, uh, it's really nice. It's full frame. It's 6K if you want to mess with 6K, but it is 16 grand. <laughs> yeah. And then we actually did some side-by-side -side tests with the C70 and the 500. And there was a really funny moment in the video that we did. And he was like, oh, that's my 500. Yeah. It looks amazing. Like, you just look how clean it is. Like, mm -hmm. look at the dynamic range. And it was mine. It was yeah. the C70. Yeah. And his was noisier. So the C70 technically has more dynamic range because of the DGO sensor. But it's not full frame, which isn't as much fun. Yeah. So. Not no, it's like barely a camera at that point. <laughs> it's not full frame. Don't even care. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm a fan. I'm a fan of the C70. Yeah. Um, but, you know, if, if you're in the C70 market, the FX6 is kind of Sony's answer to that. I, don't, I, I, I haven't... Okay, like fair point. I haven't used the FX6, but mm -hmm. looking at the FX6, I don't think I'd want to use it. <laughs> like there's something about it, like the way it's shaped. Uh-huh. It, I, it's shaped like a C500. That's not a fair point. <laughs> but is there something about Buttons. it? I just look at it and I go, I don't want to use that. Mm. Um, FX3, uh, A7S3, all that stuff, de totally different. I actually really like those cameras. I like how they look. I like how they function. I especially like how the FX3 looks. Yeah. It kind of looks like a weird rangefinder with a flip screen thing. Yeah. You know? I, but they, they do kind of look kind of different thrown together like the hand the hand grip on the fx3 mm -hmm. looks like they just ripped you know the a7s3 one on right. and stuck it on yeah, this they, big they gray had, box they had a rectangle and they're like oh shoot we need a grip and they were just like <laughs> like <laughs> yeah. a little lego <laughs> yeah um it's a shame that the fx3 doesn't have an evf attachment mm -hmm. i don't know why that's the thing because yeah, it's sell it separate i would even just take it yeah. on and off well know? that's that's what a lot of people are saying because you can do the audio attachment on top which is great that's fantastic but it's like if i don't need that but i want an eyepiece that's just not an option mm -hmm. which is kind of goofy i mm -hmm. feel like it's i don't know the fx3 is cool it's also kind of weird because it's more money and has less features than the a7s3 Figure but in that a one. way i guess now with this recent firmware update it sort of has more sort of in a in what was in a in firmware way in what sense the uh just the the settings with the new um the new menu do you know about this new firmware update i know that it got a new menu system i may not know everything the no, new menu a, is cool there's a really big firmware update that happened like two week, two or three weeks ago yeah that gave it the the i can't speak to it at the moment okay um fx3 firmware so, so yeah, so the new firmware, it's uh, version two, mm -hmm. uh, it comes with the new Cine EI, Cine EI quick and flexible ISO modes. Um, 
S log two is no longer included. You only get S log three, which is interesting because you lose a feature, but I guess no one was really using it. Uh, yeah. S log two. So it's, and you don't want them to accidentally use it. <laughs> uh, flexible ISO, which is meant to be a quick and easy mode that allows users to change the, so like the Cine EI quick mode, I think is the interesting one where. Yeah, explain it, that to me because so I'm a big dumb. This is cool. So yeah, so as you know, the there's two native ISOs. And it's really weird because if you shot at, you know, whatever level below 12,800 is, which is I think 10,000 or something. Yeah. It's actually noisier than 12,800. So, yeah, and it's significantly noisier. In fact, when I shoot with Armando, he was like, Okay, here's the deal. You shoot at, at the time it was 640. Now it's 800. But it's like you either shoot at 800 ISO or you shoot at 12,800 ISO. Nothing in between because mm-hmm. it really is really noisy. Unbelievably cleaner yeah. compared to anything in between. And so that is what the Cine EI quick uh, mode is. Mm-hmm. Is you turn that on and it only records in 800 or 12,800. It doesn't ever record anything other than those two ISOs, but what you view on the monitor is whatever you want. So okay. you're viewing, so if it's a little dark, you're viewing whatever. Sure. Uh, with a brightness. And obviously you can toggle that on and off and make sure your, and your exposure settings and everything are, you know, you're, you're, look, you're still able to look at the histogram of what, you, you know, I'm at 800 right now and here's my histogram for 800. Sure. But it can give you a, basically a false like post look and boost it or whatever. And it only records those two options. Got it. Interesting. So it just eliminates the issue of accidentally bumping it into the mm-hmm. NA, so you wouldn't want. Yeah. Especially if you're handing your camera off to somebody who's just not used to it mm-hmm. and you have to do that whole game of explaining it like Armando did. Yeah. And so it's like a surefire way to make sure that you're only recording those two values. Oh, that's kind of cool. I like that. Um, so that's cool. And then they added time code sync, which wasn't there before. Great. Through the flash, the flash yeah, uh, sync useful. port. Yeah, that's useful. Um, and some other settings. So yeah, so like this firmware should have been in existence when it shipped. Well, honestly, to me, yeah, that's all great. And that's all dandy. I like the new uh, menu that they did. Have you seen it? Yeah, this, the, just the new Sony menu? Yeah, or? no, 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 the, the, the new one that came with this update. Uh, no. It looks think. a lot like uh, Black Magic, where it's like big, chunky selectors. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the first two pages, I think it's the first two pages, mm-hmm. they're like big, chunky selectors, which are only the things that you would need to use for video. Yeah, I have seen that. Yeah, so uh, it's, because, you know, one of, the, one of the few remaining complaints with Sony is menus. So that has helped to mitigate some yeah. of that complaining. So all that to be said, like Sony's listening to the creators. They're mm-hmm. changing things. The, I think the FX3 is really nice other than like, I don't know if I would ever buy one because I want the EVF. Yeah. I think with their lineup that currently exists, I, I want the a seven four. I think oh, it's yeah. like, it's a good, it's a good price. It's 33 yeah. megapixels. I believe something, something close to there. Yeah. And um it does the 6K to 4K down yeah, res, 6K which looks to 4K. Good. It's just like a perfect little it's a all-arounder. Yeah, which is what the R5 is yeah. for Canon. Which is why I like the R5. Yeah. Yeah. And you work a lot with a guy here locally who shoots all Canon. Right. And so therefore you pick that up. Mm-hmm. You're using it there. Yeah, and it's been great. I have no real complaints with the R5, especially with the new update cuz now I can shoot HQ forever. Mm-hmm. Uh, which the, we're doing right now. The 4K HQ mode is fantastic in that camera, so there's no complaints there. The only complaint, that which you say a lot, is <laughs> it does have quite a bit of um, of a noise in the shadows mm-hmm. in, um, the log. in the log image, which is something that I'm trying to like figure out how to correct for because I've mm-hmm. seen amazing r5 footage me too um so i know that there's a way around it i just i don't know my camera well enough honestly <laughs> to um to figure that out um, we might <clears throat> i think we might be just shooting too dark like yeah. if we just shot exposed as far to the right as possible without clipping yeah i have to do like a lot of tests with it just to figure it out. i just haven't had time yeah but all that to be said like yeah zach mayfield switched to sony from his panasonic mm-hmm Armando, Jevin switch from Panasonic as well. Yeah. Um, 
And then there's already a whole slew of creators that were already there, like Sydney Dongzen and Justine and Farrakh, uh, iPhone do. Yeah. Um, Lee Zabitz. He Lee Zabitz. was, he was Fuji. Now he's Sony. And, uh, yeah, it's like, it feels like all of our little, uh, Matt, uh, if you want to talk about big creators like potato jet, mm-hmm. um, Matty Apoya, yeah. Peter's still on Peter McKinnon, still on the old Canon train. He is. He is. Peter Lindgren is not, he's on the Sony. The other Peter. Terry Warfield is on the, on the Sony. Yep. And when we went to NAB, I noticed that everybody was using a Sony camera. Yep. The A7S III in particular. Uh, and I saw a lot of those 24 to 70 uh, Sigma lenses, those 2.8 Sigma. I feel like it's funny how quickly it changed. Because for, mm. there was a, a few years in there where Sony was like, if you used a Sony, it was like you were a Sony fan. Yeah. Because it's like, why else would you use a Sony? You know, <laughs> like the colors were just. It was small. That was yeah. the only thing they had going for it that was really, yeah. really nice. Yeah. It's just the colors were not great. The bit rate was not great. It's like there's there were some cool things that they were doing for mm-hmm. sure. Like they, they Sony's always tried to push the tech, but like Canon's always pushed the image, mm-hmm. which is why everyone I inevitably picked Canon. But mm-hmm. I feel like now that the Sony has finally addressed their image, mm-hmm. there's just there's nothing wrong with their cameras, <laughs> which is is interesting place to be in. So and all the lenses are great. They're just expensive, but they're yeah. great. They are yeah, great. I don't have any complaints with their lens lineup. That's the thing is like, as a Canon shooter, if, I mean, Sony not only has a great full frame lineup, they also have great crop sensor lenses for their yeah. A6000 series. Right. And it's like... Their mount is so versatile. <clears throat> yeah. In the sense that there's just so many options. Because even if you don't want to spend the money on a Sony lens, which you're going to spend some money, let me tell you. Uh, but you got plenty of other options with like Sigma and yeah, Tamron, Tamron and whoever those, else. Those Tamron zooms that my dad has are great. They're, yeah. They have a 17 to 28, a 28 to 75, and a 75 to like 100, uh, 200 or something. Right. All 2.8. They're all under a thousand bucks. Um, not to mention the slew of, you know, vintage lenses and Leica M mount lenses you could put on there if you really wanted to. Sure. Um, so. Why are we still shooting on Canon then? That's the question. Yeah, why Why am I still shooting on a Canon? Well, the, the, the simple answer for me is that the people that I work with in Nashville shoot Canon. Yeah. So it just makes sense for me to own and use a Canon out here because I'm in Nashville area and mm-hmm. that just makes sense. Now, on the flip side, I've been doing a lot more stuff with Sony whenever I fly out to California and work with Armando or whoever else. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm kind of in the boat now where I'm like, why not own both? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you have the luxury of owning both, I guess you. I'm very much an all or nothing person, and I think I struggle with that. Yeah, in my brain, but it's like I could just own both. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't. I don't personally see. I mean, except for the fact that's like it's expensive. If I didn't <laughs> buy the Sony, like let's say I bought a Sony A7 IV, and I I kept mispronouncing. I kept saying the wrong name, by the way, like on Instagram when I was posting pictures. I kept. I don't know why. I kept putting A7 S4, oh. which is a camera that doesn't exist. It's like, oh, is that what Kando's all about? Are and they so, announcing it? Yeah, new- and so I had people messaging me on Instagram. And they're like, are you shooting with an unreleased camera? And like all this stuff. And I was like, oh, no, no, that's just. <laughs> no, I'm just not a Sony shooter. <laughs> I'm just kind of dumb sometimes and wrote the wrong thing. I don't know why I thought that. But if I got a, thank you. If I got an A7 IV uh-huh. and I got a, let's say, 24 to 70 G Master II. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mark II that they, that comes out. So let's say, what what am I in there? Five grand. Yeah, I could put five grand worth of money into lenses on my Canon. Uh huh. So that's an argument to be made. Uh huh. Or in your bank. Or my bank. <laughs> Who cares about that? But yeah, I don't. I don't know. What what should I do? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I haven't made a decision. By the way, I have no idea what I'm doing. Well, I mean, Armando lets you use his stuff, so you don't have to. You don't have to buy it. That's true. But you know, I, here's the thing with you is like you for a long time were just so anti Sony. Yeah, I was very and now you're actually, don't tell Sony, but I didn't like them. <laughs> now you're kind of like partial, like you're you're. Eh. They fixed everything that I had a problem with. Yeah, I and mean, so their that, Ibis is. I think their Ibis is better than Canon. Oh, easily better than Canon's. Ibis. Their autofocus is on par. Their color science is just a twinge below. Mm-hmm. Um, 
their lenses are on par if not better the it's low like, light is better the low light is better i've heard actually a weird flip on that someone said for photos they think the r5 is better mm-hmm. for uh, low light performance i don't know if that's true it's just someone randomly i was talking to mm-hmm. on social media was like yeah i have both and i the r5 is better for low light photos maybe that compared true. to the a7 IV. four four okay yeah i was like i don't think that'd be true with the s no but... no compared to the a7 IV, which is the two cameras i'm gotcha and the four is not the the r5 from canon is their one of their flagship cameras right Whereas the a7 IV is actually kind of one of their mid-tier like prosumer cameras. So yeah. it's not even considered that pro-pro level. I think it retails for $2,500. Which, and by the way, it includes a full-sized HDMI, which the R5C doesn't even include. Yeah, that was the biggest myth. The R5C is a miss for me, yeah. man. I don't know. Well, as a Canon fan, like I was like, if it had C-Log2, if it had... You know, built in and D. If I'm really dreaming here, yeah, F- full size HDMI, <laughs> yeah, better battery life. Yeah, I, the battery life thing for me is a non-issue. Actually, I'm in the firm belief that like, like you're powering what is essentially a cinema camera, even though it's in a smaller body. You know, that's neither here nor there. You're powering essentially a cinema camera with an LP6N battery. Mm-hmm. You try try to power a C500 on an LP6N sure. and see how long you get yeah, with yeah. that battery life. So for me, the battery life is a non-issue. But I will say that the um, sensor quality, I was noticing some issues with like some pink lines going through the sensor and certain like lighting conditions. Are you referring to the shoot that you did with Armando? It, we weren't even on the shoot at that point. We were just in his studio. We set up a quick shot and we were just we're like, what are these pink lines going across our screen? And it was something to do with the sensor. And we like messed with the lighting and then they eventually they went away. So there's like some weird stuff going on there. And the micro mm. HDMI is just kind of a weird thing. And it's a little clunky to use. Yeah, It's definitely cool. It's for a particular, it's for a particular type of shooter. Uh, shooter's not me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's for sure that's well for the sure. and the r5 has better autofocus because it's yeah. using the normal autofocus and, yeah uh, it's the r5 i think makes more sense actually for most people yeah for most people i think if you're like an indie filmmaker like you would totally disagree with me right now like mm-hmm. indie filmmaker documentary filmmaker something you know you're doing like some yeah, commercial you, shoots you'd, you'd be like doc get the c70 yeah that that's true yeah you're right so i, I don't know c70 is it's not c70 the r5c is just kind of a it's a weird camera Mm-hmm. I don't know what to think of it. Yeah, I think a lot of the features of the R5C should just be how the R5 is. <laughs> yeah, like, or that's the R, uh, the C70 should have just been full frame. Yeah, 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 that's it. Honestly, that would have been it. You're right, you're right, actually. That's a good point. If the C70 was full frame, then the R5C doesn't need to exist. But that's why they made the C70 not full frame, so that they could make the R5C to sell you both the, or all three. They want you to buy all their cameras. <laughs> of course. Canon's yeah. really good at getting your money. They are, they are. But back to the topic. Um, let me answer the question of why I'm a Canon shooter and why I still don't want to switch. Uh, I hate to say it like I, well, first off, I think I'm in a different category because I have the C70. Sure. Because nothing that Sony makes other than the FX6 which compares, is, which I don't like the FX6. And I don't, I don't, want the I don't really know that the FX6 compares to the C70. I think FX6 is more like a mm-hmm. C300. And like, I can't tell you how much I've enjoyed the the built-in NDs, like mm. the having the four audio tracks that I can, I've used all the four of them you yeah. know, quite a bit. The actual real time code in, now that I'm using the tentacle sync a lot, yeah. I really enjoy that. I love having C-Log2, which is Canon's best profile. Right. Um, DGO sensor. Uh, C70, cleaner. C70 is a great camera. Like, I really like it. As far as Canon goes, they really, they really hit a home run. Autofocus with that. could be better. Except for autofocus, which is a little slow, but that's kind of their cinema autofocus is Mm -hmm. kind of what you expect. Yeah. Also, I'm using the adapter and EF lenses. I've heard that you can get better performance with like a true RF lens. Yeah, that makes sense. And then, of course, the full frame-ness that it Yeah, the lack of full frame. (laughs) Which some people would argue that that's not a big deal. Some would say that it is a big deal. I think that's personal preference. I think it's just annoying to me mentally because it's like, you know, if I wanted to use the 15 to 35, that'd be a wonderful all around YouTuber lens because it's pretty wide and it's got the IS and it's 2.8. 
right. but it's crop, you know, I'm getting the crop out of it. And so if I spent $2,500 on this lens, I'm only using half of that lens. Mm -hmm. So half of my money is not being utilized. That's how I see it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> I, I get your logic there. That makes sense. Um, but the reason I don't want to switch to Sony is I actually, and maybe Connor is being a little light because he's made friends with the Sony reps, but <laughs> like, I don't like their bodies. I don't like the whole, th it feels like a Prius compared to, I don't know if Canon is a Porsche. I would never say no, that. Canon's that's not, like a, that's Hasselblad. like a, yeah, hundred percent. But what's better than like a Prius? Like a, What's better than a Prius? Any car ever. So like, let's go, let's go Acura, right? Or like, sure. or Lexus. Or Lexus, something. Lexus. Let's go up to a Lexus. Yeah, you're saying Canon's Lexus? I, yeah, like my C70 is like a Lexus. Yeah, it's comfortable. It's it, comfortable. It rides, it, it rides smooth, man. It's smooth. Um, yeah. I don't think any Sony shooter would argue that RF lenses are great. Um, EF lenses, the usability of EF lenses is great. Mm -hmm. um, and again, the color. The, yeah. the C the C log two with the DGO looks amazing. I love how it looks. And because everybody else is shooting on Sony, mm -hmm. our stuff, the Dave Mays channel yeah. looks different. Sure does. Because we got a C 500, a C 70 and an R five. I got, you know, the solution to all this is that we need to all switch to Fuji film. <laughs> Let's be honest with ourselves. The, uh, uh, what's it, what's the, what's the one that the X H the X H two S which is, you know, 6.2 K open gate F log two. Yep. 14 stops of dynamic range. Yep. ProRes internal. I mean, what are we really doing here? <laughs> I mean, if we're talking like luxury the line cars, are nice. yeah. oh man, the skin tones on Fujifilm are something else. You know what's funny? I don't like their retro, like their retro stuff seems like um, like H&M or Forever 21 is to fashion. Mm. You know what I mean? Like H&M, I don't know if you uh, know the reference there, but like if you look at like Balenciaga or Louis Vuitton, like the true fashion companies. Yeah, the stuff that looks bad that people spend a lot of money on. Exactly. Yes, I know exactly what you're talking about. Like H&M and Forever 21 are ripping all that off yeah and so they're they cheaper it. versions of stuff that looks bad yeah yeah exactly <laughs> but it's like made in you know it's made really cheaply it always falls apart i mean old navy is a good example too it's yeah. like an old a pair of old navy jeans is going to cost you 20 bucks but and it'll look decent but it's not going to be like a levi's that will last you longer right. you know or whatever so that's what i'm saying is like i feel like fuji's design it looks sort of retro and cool but then like it doesn't feel as good as like a Leica, you know, or whatever. Like it just, there's like a miss there. Yeah. I mean, I feel like that's preference for sure. Cause I love it. <laughs> uh, and then also, also the X-H2S doesn't have that. It's much, okay. it's much more like, like a it's camera, very, camera. It's only black. It's sleek. It has one dial at the top, which is just like your Olympus right there. Oh, okay. And then uh, the other side has the little top screen, like the Canon R5. Yeah. So they've, they've definitely addressed that for that one, which is supposed to be their more professional. I can't speak to it because I haven't held it or used it at all. Yeah, I haven't shot with it. I've seen some footage and I've held it. Um, Joshua is his name from Moment. I yeah. saw him at cool. Condo and he was showing it to me you know, in secret. We didn't, Sony reps were around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was, like, he was like, look at this. <laughs> he like brought out this Fuji film and I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> um, it was really cool. But I mean, not full frame, so... Not even worth looking yeah, at. The, the difference is Fuji is only APS-C for that line. So therefore, all the lenses are all the lenses they make are great, and they're all designed to be optimized for that. So, yeah. which is why I like the Olympus because like all the Micro Four Thirds lenses are made to be small like Micro Four Thirds lenses. Yeah, I had a video on my channel when I posted videos called Fuji Film is the Taco Bell of cameras. <laughs> um, I don't really remember what the point of that was, but in that video, I talk about the fact that like everyone should own a Fuji Film or a Leica, but like it's that it's that same it's that same vein, right? It's like own your Canon, own your Sony, own your Nikon, make but your then. Yeah, make your money. Those are your work cameras, but then own a Fuji film. Yeah. Right? Because yeah. that's like the fun, the personable, uh -huh. the like, I just want to chill out and have a good time camera. And so, Taco Bell is that to you? No, I have no idea why I named it that. <laughs> You'd have to watch the video. I'd have to watch the video to remember. 
why I, I called it that. Connor's a YouTuber. Right? Um, Check out his channel. Yeah, Connor it's McKenzie. great. I bought like Taco Bell for the thumbnail. I set my uh, X-T4 in like just tons of the like sauce packets uh -huh. for no reason. It's a great. <laughs> it's a, good it's, a it's a great one. I did it with Zach. It was a, it was a good time. I think it made sense. Pretty sure the video made sense. <laughs> we'll check it out. Yeah. Um, but again, back to the Sony thing. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah, Sony. Uh, I I think Armando can relate to this too, and maybe you as well. Like, I don't. I like having something different. I I like mm. being different. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, and no, I feel I like, that. To, if I'm being honest with myself, like the fact that everybody is shooting on Sony is one of the reasons why I don't want to. Yeah. <laughs> because I don't want to be a part of that. As much as I love everybody who's in it, like yeah. a lot of this, a lot of the creators we listed are literally our friends. Yeah. Um, very close friends at that. So no shade towards them whatsoever. Um, but that doesn't make any like business sense whatsoever. Uh, but I mean, the reason I have the C70 at all is because I was working with Amy and Jordan. Sure. And they only shoot Canon. Amy and Jordan, the wedding. Yeah, Amy and Jordan, the, uh, my photographer, photographer friends. friends. Yeah, just to not clarify. friends, like, my cousins, <laughs> like yeah, family. Hey, they're literally family. family. But they hired me last year, and I worked for them all year. Yeah. And they're the ones who actually purchased the C70 that I use. Yeah. And then we worked a deal out when I uh, went freelance sure. to pay it off, and so I got a great, you know, obviously a great deal with that. So, you know, but I could sell it and just buy a Sony. Yeah, you um, could. But honestly, like you said, there's nothing that really quite matches the c70 on the sony side so if you're looking for a perfect replacement there's just not mm. there's not one yeah yeah exactly yeah i was talking to zach mayfield today um just about the c70 a little bit and he's like ah man he's like i love my a7s but i really wish i had built-in nds that's yeah. like one of the biggest things yeah. um but uh yeah like i use my dad's a7s3 for um some b-roll for a movie that he he just wrapped on he just like finished it last week mm. um it's a little uh, christian documentary that he's been working on it like a low budget kind of indie thing yeah and he needed some b-roll and so i shot it all on the rs3 with the uh the ronin the art the new one uh mm -hmm. with the a7s3 uh with his little lens and one thing that i think a lot of people don't notice but because i'm so used to the c70 lcd screen is the a7s screen like literally the screen and also the fx3 screen which is by the way the only screen built into the camera right on the is really bad it's low resolution and it's, it's not, small it's not that great now counterpoint the evf on the a7s3 it's, is fantastic yeah it's one of the best on the market it's fantastic and the a1 evf is the best ever maybe <laughs> yeah uh it's, well, I mean, it's Canon amazing has the r3 uh, well that's which true is really good i haven't used that one in all fairness but. and to be honest i've toyed with the idea of going selling the c70 and buying that oh that'd be kind of because it'd be a fun hybrid and i've heard it's better in low light yeah than the r5 and no nd yeah. though yeah no nd no, no exactly. nd there's a hybrid it's hard to switch so my current philosophy my current situation if i don't move at all and i just use what i actually have right now is i'm using the olympus to take pictures of my kids right and i'm using to be a leica let's face and it i'm using the c70 to film videos yeah um and yeah yeah that's part of if i sell all my olympus gear i'd actually have enough cash to buy uh, a leica a used do it. leica do it so that's my current thing but also i was taking pictures of the kids uh yesterday and my boys run a lot mm. and the face tracking on that is fast enough to where as they're running around, it's getting their face. Just use your iPhone like every other parent. Let's, I mean, like, come no on. Way. What are I you doing? I can't do it. I love taking <laughs> real pictures. Yeah, I, I can appreciate that. Can you imagine parents back in the day taking pictures of us running around screaming our heads off with a film camera? <laughs> no, exactly. Like, and they got the picture. It's amazing. They were better photographers than us. That's true. Yeah. Well, I, there's actually this thing called zone focusing. Yeah, that was all A7S or A7 IV on that yeah. one. For all the people who can't see because he's showing me not you it's a picture of his kid and it looks great <laughs> on good the look, a7 good four. looking kid ryan he's, um, a, he's a good boy and then yeah the other day too we took uh we found a frog and uh you found a frog they were playing with a frog nice. so that's all olympus and i do love the colors they look great skin tone's great 
Yeah, the Olympus is it's sharp. A, it's a solid camera. The OM1 uh, is what I have currently. Um, talk, talk about being different. Who else owns an Olympus? Nobody. Yeah. Literally nobody. I think here's the, here's what I'm actually thinking. I can buy like the cheapest Leica for the, to, for the whole experience. Uh, for like 1500, like the M8 is 1500, which mm-hmm. is a little older. Okay. But so what I could do is sell my other Olympus and like, I end up only using like one lens. The 17 mil is the yeah. one I use. So sell all the other stuff. Keep that with the one lens right. as my autofocus stills camera. Yeah. And then, <laughs> and then have your Leica stills camera yeah, for the, the show off. That, yeah. That's the show off camera. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what else is it for? I, every time I hold I, range finder, I love the range finder. It's fun. I feel like every time I, I hold a Leica, it's like, oh my God, it's a Leica. And then I pick it up and I go, that's kind of crappy. Um, like in the terms <laughs> of like what's inside, like it, obviously it takes amazing photos. What's inside is a Panasonic set. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. It's like, it's not as the lux- lenses are, are yeah, really it's good. The, it's the optics that are good. I, I feel like it's small. When it the was lenses a film, are tiny. when it was a film camera, it was like the body was pristine and the lenses were amazing. And then the film was whatever you decided mm-hmm. to use. But now the internals are kind of, kind of whatever well, f- so forget the tech you know like first off there, there is the the tech itself like let's address yeah leica has um gen- like very good i think i think objectively good color science yes that's true um, especially in the black and whites but the yeah <laughs> the color science with the black and whites are well, they, amazing i mean they're the only company on the market making uh, black and white only sensors that's because but. that's ridiculous and they charge like six they charge more for grand it. no plus. no eight grand really yeah. eight grand <laughs> yeah. eight grand for black and white it looks good don't get me wrong but yeah yeah you're insane it's i've been on a i, I need to save this for another show to be honest because i've been on a bit of a like a kick and so i have a lot of things to say okay but i, yeah, think I would ge- love to hear the, like the whole spiel i think generally it is actually like it comes back to what you're saying about the fuji with the with the taco bell analogy it is like truly about the experience yeah and the range finder is super unique taco bell the experience <laughs> it's the nice thing it's yeah. the yeah you have the work tool and then you have the nice thing and it's that and it's uh zone focusing is like a skill that you develop which is like I look at an object and I start thinking in distance mm. and it's a skill that uh, Leica shooters develop over time. That's a good point. Where you don't need autofocus because I know ex- that's exactly, you know, a foot and a half. Right. And so I literally just look at my, you know, my measurement on the lens and then I'm good. Right. And then I, I use the rangefinder to verify that, but I start where I know it is and then I kind of fix it and then take my picture. And really good photographers, that's what they do. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a cool skill to develop yeah. um, as that's, a photographer. That's really fair because, honestly, when I use my film camera, it takes me so long to focus that thing because <laughs> I'm sitting there with a the little sp- split prism. I'm like, is that in focus? Is that in focus? Is that- oh, wait, maybe not. Uh, and, you know, it, and at that moment, the 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 moment is gone. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like I can't just. T- yeah. Exactly. There's like something happening fast. You just forget it. It's <laughs> that's why never gonna happen. That's why I don't think I could go full like a as a, a dad with toddlers. Yeah. That's, yeah. Good luck with that. You know what I mean. <clears throat> um, also, like a rangefinders can't focus focus at all any closer than 0.7 meters, which I think is like it, it's it, what's almost that two in, feet uh, in, in American. <laughs> I don't know. Point, point 0.7 meters. Um, th- what is that? That's <laughs> I'm not That's, smart enough to know this. Uh, 22 inches, so it's like roughly two feet. Um, yeah, that makes sense. Oh, seven. Me- it thinks I said seven meters. Yeah, but it, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's two point two point two nine feet. Um, which is that's pretty. F- I mean, it's really far away from your lens. I would say. It's so two, like two rulers and a from, bit. From here to that drink is as close as I can get. Right. Which if I'm shooting on a 35 of my kid, like it's still going to be pretty wide. Whereas I normally would want to be at like a little closer. But anyways. So anyways, back to the original main topic. Yeah. Are you sure this isn't the Distractables podcast? <laughs> <laughs> Quite distracted. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think uh, for me, I don't enjoy the process of using a Sony as much as a Canon. Sure. Um, let alone, obviously, my Olympus or, in your case, a Fuji. Mm-hmm. You know, ironically, I I, per, I do like the Olympus. I, I actually have fun with it yeah. for some reason. I like the layout. I like the 
color on it. Um, that's worth a lot. So, yeah. And then same with Leica. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but as a work tool, none of that stuff really matters. It's like, just shut up and use the right tool. You right. Know? Well, and, and, and I would argue that in your case, the C70 is the right tool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, for you. I mean, and for me, like, should I switch to Sony? I, I'm, I'm in the firm camp that no, I'm not going to switch to Sony. But I will also buy a Sony. <laughs> um, I feel like that's the right play for me. It's like when I go to California and work with my California YouTuber peoples, you know, they're all on Sony. It makes sense for me to have a Sony. Yeah, and get the, get. you don't have to buy the $4,000 one. No, You no. can just buy the four, the A7 IV. Yeah, I'm going to buy which the they don't. IV. Some of them don't have. It yeah. gives you something a little different. Yeah, and then I can maybe instead of buying the um, 24 to 70 G Master Mark II, I get like some, you know, the Sigma variants of that, mm-hmm. which I save a ton of money doing that. Yeah. And it'd be great. So it's like Sony, Sony's a solid system. There's nothing wrong with it. And I'm now comfortable saying that I would not mind owning one. Yeah. To be honest. Oh, wow. That's a big one. Yeah. That's for me, that, that's kind of <laughs> crazy because I, I was a big basher of Sony. By the way, I gave a uh, an idea to a Sony rep. So if this happens, I uh, I just want to like fully say this out to the public. Yeah. They Sony cameras. I saw I saw one of their engineer guys, and I was like, Hey, here's an idea. The your Sony cameras have Bluetooth, right? Uh-huh. They're like, Yeah. I was like, And your headphones have Bluetooth, right? <laughs> and he was like, mm, Yeah. And I was like, Put them together. <laughs> I was like, why can't why can't I have um, wireless monitoring? Because uh, if I'm monitoring, it doesn't matter if it has a slight lag. I don't think, and, and I don't I, think it would. It wouldn't have that much, anyways. Yeah, and it may not even have that much lag. And I want no wires to monitor. Uh, so if that happens, that was my idea. Um, and Sony, I expect royalties. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Well, what was cool was his reaction. It was like one of the. It was like literally the head engineer. Yeah, it was one of the guys for the cinema line for that new Sony cinema, which we didn't even talk about. The new the robot F- Sony F9 or something. No, no, no. The the yeah the FX three mixed with the robot. Yeah, it's called like an F nine robot. There's uh no, not F9. The F9 is already out. It's like an F something. But anyways, the the new cinema robot, we were talking to him about that. He was giving us little hints, but he wouldn't tell us what it was. Yeah. Um, it's not something that we would use. It just type new Sony camera. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not finding it. FR7. Yeah, the FR7. Yeah, so it's like a, it's not something for the average Joe, especially not for the YouTuber Joe, but um, yeah. it's still pretty cool. But anyways, I, I told him that idea, so if that happens. But yes, I'm not switching to Sony, but I, I'm considering buying a Sony. Okay, okay, okay. I um, think I'm relentlessly avoiding it, but I know it may be inevitable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because, yeah, if I just sold all my Canon stuff, I could buy like a fx3 with a couple of really nice lenses and just kind of Mm -hmm. switch but i work with soundstripe every week yep and he literally just rented my c70 yeah he gave me me 200 bucks to rent it this weekend i think that the c70 is the the right play for you so i I wouldn't i wouldn't worry too much about it as far as your secondary camera between leica olympus i'm not buying that sony for my fun camera no yeah it's like that's that's between other brands so but anyways that's our opinions but if you guys have opinions let's transition into the next segment you can let us know at hashtag ask ghp uh we're opening it up to you yes. guys this is something that we're going to directly reference in the future episodes so if you guys have any input if you think we're wrong if you have direct questions about anything that we talked about or just direct questions in general mm-hmm. feel free to hit us up hashtag gh uh, ask ghp that's me. right Hashtag ask GHP, which stands for Golden Hour Podcast. It's not rocket science, people. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, we're also um, thinking about getting a website up and going as well. So that could be a place for you to submit questions. Of course, the obvious choice is Twitter. Um, that's going to make the most sense for yeah. for hitting uh, Dave up for specifically because I don't use Twitter. <laughs> but feel free to. You know, especially as we're starting this out, um, I don't want to limit it only to Twitter uh, necessarily. Yeah. So feel free to send us a DM on Instagram mm-hmm. um, because I know a lot of our audience is probably there. Yeah, I, I really like the idea of it being a dialogue, not 
so live streamy because it's mm-hmm. not instantaneous. But um, yeah, I, I like the conversation. It's good. Yeah, so ask us any questions. Ask us about YouTube. Yeah. Ask us about cameras. Tell me why I should sell my R5 and just buy a Sony because that's the better choice. Yep. <laughs> just tell me whatever you want, you know? Exactly. Um, so hashtag ask GHP on Twitter and uh, yeah, hit us up. Looking forward to it. Yeah. So let's finish up with uh, Unreal. Unreal? So Unreal, you've been... We're talking about that. You've been messing around with Unreal today? Yeah. For the last two days, I've been... Uh, I You know, I built a PC. I was a Mac guy. The PC is great. I really appreciate my Mac now though, that I have a PC, let me tell you. Um, <laughs> How so? That's I don't know if we have time to talk about this. Just give me the the cliff notes on that. Uh, okay, the, the, the cliff notes are um, PC have lot problem, have restart lot time. <laughs> Um, Mac work real good all time. Never problem. Wow. Yeah. I haven't used a PC in 15 years. Yeah. So. But I will say I've never, dude, I've never owned a PC that I can think You're of. You're one of the rare people that like your parents used a Mac. Yeah. We were Macintosh people. Like a lot of n- kind of normies have PCs. Like yeah. Dells or whatever. Right? Yeah. I think we may have had a Dell, but it was like the printer uh-huh. computer like that was the one we just printed stuff on like, we don't use that one we don't <laughs> yeah. we never we don't touch that one yeah i printing. think it was like school programs needed a dell so we sure. bought a dell for that but other than that we well, like my dad is a, a build a pc guy so when i was a kid we built pcs off of tigerdirect.com wow. we bought tiger, so, tiger direct do you remember that no i have no <laughs> idea really what old. that is it's like one of the classic like places to buy pc parts sure. so um, I bought everything on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's yeah. a retro. It didn't uh, exist uh, when website. I was when I was like twelve years old. But yeah, so we built my own PC. My dad has always built his own PCs, and that was his argument: was like you can buy all of the pieces for like a fraction of the price of a Mac. Granted, we're talking about circa two thousand and two. Sure. So wow. at the time, you know, Mac Pros were ten thousand dollars. And it was like, you could just buy a PC for a thousand dollars that does the same thing, uh, ish. Yeah. Obviously I was not like, so that's what I grew up with. My dad always built PCs. He was a music producer. Mm -hmm. He used PCs for all of his work. Um, but then when I started working with Jeffrey doing the weddings, he was all Mac and I was like, Oh wait, all the video guys are on Mac. I can't work with anybody because I'm on a PC. Mm -hmm. So I switched over to Mac. Really? I didn't know it was that late. That you switched to Mac. Uh, yeah. I've only I've only ever known you on a Mac computer. So that's kind of funny. Well, I went full into it. I fell in love with it. Yeah. Not to mention that was also during the time of the iPhone. So, sure. you know, iPhone plus Mac made a lot of sense. Um, I got into the Mac when Steve Jobs was still alive. So it yeah. was really fun to like watch the keynotes. We're and stuff. fully in the Apple cult. <laughs> tomorrow's apple fo- iphone day <laughs> oh there's so many things happening I'm, I'm excited for the 14 i think me too i have the 12 i like the 12 and the 13 wasn't worth upgrading to in my opinion mm-hmm. but the 14 we'll see we'll see i may i mean we'll see next week when we do this podcast yeah, our thoughts that'll but, probably be the conversation <laughs> but um i'm very pleased with my 12 honestly it's, yeah it, the images still look good listen if the, the 14 doesn't have pacific blue Okay, I don't want it. The Pacific blue is the only I color like the that blue. iPhone did that was any good. They did um, the blue wrong this year with the yeah, 13. It's I know. too pastel-y blue. Yeah. But um, I think, th- actually, I think the rumors are that it's purple, not not blue this year. Well, okay, Apple, you failed. Black is, you can't really go wrong with black. So. I guess. It's just boring now. Yeah. But uh, anyways, continue. Oh, yeah. Well, PC versus Mac. My PC has RGB lights, though, so that's cool. <laughs> it glows blue. Uh, so, yeah. And then also inside my PC, for anyone that cares, I got the uh, NZXT Kraken uh, water cooler, which has a little LCD screen inside. And I can put a little GIF in there, which is hilarious. So I had an Apple logo going. So uh, for <laughs> Just anyone, to remind you. Yeah, just to remind Where you. your loyalty lies. But uh, I, I'm messing around with Unreal Engine because I'm a gamer. Uh, I enjoy gaming. And then also like filmmaking is really dipping into Unreal, especially the last couple of years with like Mandalorian or Obi-Wan Kenobi to a lesser extent. Yeah. Um, so that's pretty cool. So I'm like, it's free. I should learn it. And I'm messing around with it today for like 
three or four hours and i, I got more than that you've been doing it all day yeah <laughs> i've been hearing you <laughs> and then uh but I, I gave up because i dropped a fern a little plant into my landscape that i'm trying to build uh, learning how to build and the shadows were all blotchy and ugly and weird uh-huh. and and i couldn't figure out why and i spent like an hour just trying to figure out why the shadows of my fern were wrong <laughs> and uh it turns out i just didn't check a little box uh-huh. and it was like it needed the light the directional light from the sun needed to be movable uh-huh. and i had it on i think i clicked like the one i don't know there's like three options anyways i, I don't really know what i'm doing to well be what what is unreal engine for those of the people who may not know unreal engine is something made by epic that is uh um essentially it, it allows you to build 3d environments whether that's for gaming or for um it could be even used for like real estate uh, mm-hmm. a lot of people are using it for real estate or in more recently i would say uh, cinema production um, and they're, it's hyper-realistic, essentially. Um, I mean, you can build unrealistic stuff as well. It depends on what you're doing, but it's generally... <laughs> Hence the name Unreal. Yeah, it's generally <laughs> built for uh, hyper-realistic uh, stuff, and it, it's pretty incredible what you can do with it. The lighting in it now is, with Unreal Engine 5, it's um, dynamic lighting, which means that like as you're moving stuff, uh, the light is updated in real time before you'd have to bake it in. So it's like you'd move all your lights in, then you hit like essentially the render button Mm -hmm. and then it would take a long time and it would render out your scene and then the light would look good. But if you moved anything, your shadows and lights would stay in place. So then you'd have to like, let's say you're like, ah, that lamp is in the wrong spot by three inches. Let me move it over. Now all your stuff's messed up. Now you got to hit render, bake the light again. Mm -hmm. And it would take however long to do it again but now it's all updated in real time so you can just move stuff around it's pretty incredible and yeah so it's a 3d modeling software or do you Um, model or do you bring objects it's not really i would i i don't know enough to talk about this i don't as far as i know it's not a 3d modeling that's more like blender uh blender is where you would model the 3d objects so let's say you want to let's say you build like a building or a person or a red object or something you would build it in blender or other softwares like that and then you bring that into unreal engine where you're building the world i would say gotcha and it's also a game engine right so like yeah people make video games using unreal yeah engine. like first person third person top down vr a lot of people are doing it for vr stuff mm-hmm. it's pretty cool um wow. i don't know anything about it i've literally just i dropped a fern into a world ladies and gentlemen it's pretty cool but it's like it's like uh, in a way it is sort of a video game of it's like Minecraft next level in a way <laughs> like very much next level. It's not a game like Minecraft is, but you are creating like yeah, it's world building virtual worlds. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. really cool. It's really cool, and I, it, because it's like I built this PC to game to edit, but I was like, it's free, and it's something that I just feel like if it's there, why not learn it? Mm-hmm. So. And what a world we're living in right now to where like Unreal Engine is free. Yeah. Blender is free for yeah. 3D animation. That'll modeling. be next. Um, and then DaVinci Resolve is free for video yeah, editing. I know. So So there's a, no barriers other than purchasing the computer. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, that is definitely still the barrier. But, but you know what's been really interesting to me is our friend Malachi has been helping us with yeah. um, with uh, the Soundstripe videos that I've been producing with Soundstripe. Yeah, he's been doing uh, a lot of editing for for me, and he has a 2015 <laughs> MacBook Pro. It's, and I'm not even sure if it was maxed out. It's no, like, probably not. Um, and it's the old one that was before. It was pre USB C MacBook. Like yeah. pre butterfly keyboard, it MacBook. had the port still. Remember when we were yeah. all like upset? We're like, "Where's the ports?" And we finally got them back. Yeah. His still has ports. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He like we have uh, finally yeah. gotten back the SD card, the HDMI port, yeah. the MagSafe. He never lost it. He man. never lost it. <laughs> he, he did it right, I guess. Um, and he's always been like, "Yeah, I need to upgrade it. I need to upgrade it." But he was using a pre- uh, Premiere. Yeah, and he finally switched over to Resolve because he. I think it wasn't even about speed. It was just like, I'm just sick of paying for it. I was sick of paying for it. And then also just, it doesn't work very well. (laughs) He switched over to Resolve. He's been doing all these edits. We're shooting everything C500, C70, 4K, 10 bit. And I was like, oh man, his computer's just going to explode. And surprisingly, 
obviously it's not very it's not super fast it's not as zippy as mine but it would works be. but it totally works it's unbelievable i've been able to like he would he shows me an edit and i can skip around and like make little tweaks and changes and i can actually view it and i'm like how is this playing this on this computer it's amazing yeah that it, it, program is really optimized and he was using the free version yeah tech to, tech today is just it's just really awesome it's a really exciting time for tech yeah and it's exciting time for the Golden Hour Podcast. Yeah. Maybe we should end this. We've been talking a yeah. minute and I'm hungry. <laughs> Let's get some Taco Bell.